Amen. Grab your Bible. Let's go to 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. Uh, I heard Pastor Ryan Allman did an awesome job Sunday. Isn't he a good preacher? He's a good personal friend of mine. We were talking late last night. He always makes fun of me that I can't dance, but I tell him, Ryan, I'm a better dancer than you, son. You don't know. But uh, he's always teasing me about something. But he is tremendous. God has used him so greatly for, for this church. And uh, I took a trip with the Melanson's and the Holloways last week. We went skiing. For the first time in my life, I went skiing. Had never done it before. Let me rephrase that. Last week, I rolled down a mountain most of the week. <laughs> True story. And, uh, but by the third, fourth day, I started getting the hang of it. But I learned so much. My body is still hurting in places, y'all. It's just, when you're 42, I know I look 25, but when you're 42, it's like your body doesn't do things. Like Jensen, my son over here, raise your hand, Jens. Don't you love my son, Jensen? Yeah. Embarrassed him on purpose like that. My dad used to always do that to me. Uh, Jensen was, he was skiing blacks, which is like the hardest. Did you ski double diamond blacks? No? Okay, black. I, told, I, I lied to a few people in the lobby, but I guess, I'm, Lord, I apologize. I didn't mean to lie. But he, ski, he skied blacks, which is the hardest ones. And um, it's just amazing how the lighter bodies take the beating better. And those of us who are blessed with a larger ministry, it's like it's, it's harder. Your are One of my white house was so bad, I'm not lying. A mother and her daughter came check on me. Sir, are you okay? And I have like ice on my face because I bit it face forward on a slope. But I got the hang of it. I, I did. I got the hang of it. it, it you just got to stick with it. And I was like, I've got like 80 sermons from this trip, y'all. It's awesome. But we had a great time. But it's so nice to know that we don't have a church that is here because of the pastor. We're here because of Jesus, that you showed up, great attendance during a holiday because a lot of kids were off of school. And I just want to reinforce that. We don't, we're not here because of Josh or any other Melanson or anybody else, not even the singing and the worship, although they're pretty awesome. We're here for Jesus Christ and him alone and each other. We love each other. Amen? So go to 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. We're in the middle of a series called Making It. Now, God's calling you to be a maker. He's first of all calling you to be a disciple and then a disciple who makes disciples. Now, what's a disciple? A follower of Jesus. That's it. It's a follower of Jesus. Are you following God in all of your ways? Now, if you're new or you don't come much, chances are you're not. That's what we're here for. We're here to help you do that. It takes time. You got to keep coming. You, you got to keep practicing. Uh, I took ski school. And that helped me. But I wasn't an expert after one time. You're not going to come to church one time and learn how to live for God. You got to keep going. But I want to encourage you, if you're struggling, no matter how bad you are, because I know some of you think you're just so bad, we got people in here that used to do all the stuff you do and would have done it had they had access to it before if they didn't do it. It doesn't matter where you are. What I'm telling you, when you give your heart to God and fully surrender, He'll take the reins from there, and you will make it to heaven, and everybody around you, I believe, will make it too because you'll influence them. But you got to believe what I'm telling you and act on it. Amen? So I want to continue the series today, and I want to speak on the subject, making room. So let's go to 2 let's go to second, um, Kings, the fourth chapter. And it says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? Read that with me. What do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a little jar of oil. And then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Say that with me, empty vessels. That's going to be an important part of the message today. Do not gather just a few, but when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, and then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So that little jar of oil wasn't enough to fill all of those empty vessels. 
But God said, if you bring me empty vessels, the oil will keep increasing. That makes sense, doesn't it? In your Christian walk. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. Now watch this part. So the oil ceased. Whenever there was no more empty vessels, the oil stopped being poured out. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. I want to preach on the simple subject, making room. As long as you come to God empty, the Holy Spirit will always pour into your life. But if you're going to be full of distractions and worldliness and all that stuff, then there'll never be any room for God, and you're never going to know what God wants to do. But I got a feeling that God wants to do some miracles for some of you, but you got to let God be God, and you got to give Him an empty vessel. So I know you may not have much to offer, but whatever you do have to offer, if you offer it to God today, he's going to give you himself. And you're going to experience something some of you have never experienced before in Jesus' name. Would you let me pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every heart here, God. Sometimes we don't know what to do. We get confused by the church thing, God. But if you could tug on the heart of somebody here, Lord, who doesn't even have the confidence that they can do it, that you would give them the confidence to live for you. Give them the faith that they can do it through your power and your strength, God. And baptize them with the Holy Spirit. Evidence of speaking in tongues, God. For I know that you still do that today, just like you did in the book of Acts. And I claim it for everybody who doesn't have it. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Tap your neighbor next to you and say, I think this message is going to be right for you. And you may be seated. Environments matter. Everybody likes cleanliness, right? You got to make room. It's, we buy big vehicles. Cracks me up how big our vehicles are today. We, when I grew up, we had a little bitty Chevette. Do y'all know what a Chevette is? It's like a hatchback. It's awesome. We all sat in there. We used, you know, it's amazing. Now, y'all, 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 y'all like buy NASA armor for y'all kids to ride in vehicles now. You know, you strap them in with chains and you know, it's all kind of like, it's so serious, man. We used to sit on the back dash of the vehicles. You know, you rode in the trunk. There wasn't no seatbelt. I don't know if our parents were trying to get rid of us or I don't know. It just is different world now. But the environments matter. It's, it's like things matter. Now, you need space. You need cleanliness. And people buy bigger vehicles. We have bigger houses now, bigger churches, because we, we need room the crazy thing is, is, is nobody seems to have time anymore. Everybody's busy. Like, laid off people are busy. It's just crazy. Like, you don't even have a job. How are you busy? But everybody's busy. Everybody's got stuff going on. It's, it's our culture. It's not just America either. It's other countries too. Everybody's working, 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 working. All we do is work. And it just seems like there's no room for God. And we, we, we like give God like three seconds in the morning. And, you know, it, sometimes we come on Sundays when we have time. And there's just no space in our lives for God. And we can't figure out why we're so unhappy. Do you know getting married is not going to make you happy? It may make you sad. It can be a part of your happiness, but it's not going to make you happy. Do you know making more money is not going to make you happy? It'll help you buy some more stuff, but it's not going to make you happy. It's not going to fulfill your heart. Do you know all that weight you've been trying to lose? You know if you lose it, you're still going to have something wrong with you? You might lose weight and find out you're still ugly. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Lord, forgive me, I apologize. <laughs> That's what I'm so worried I'm so worried about it. I've been telling my wife, sweetheart, I'm telling you, if I lose, and I'm going to lose weight, she's going to be like, you're still ugly, son. Or you're still good looking, whatever she chooses to say. The truth is, it's just like, how are we going to get our place, ourselves to a place where we want the right things for the right reasons? You know, I, 
I partied a little bit in college, but I, I loved God, and I didn't want to do it. I've been to like, I think I've been in a bar two times in my life. And, and I'm telling you, I felt so uncomfortable because I was raised better than that. And, and, but those of you who spent a lot of time in the bar, I want to encourage you. Do you know you're not going to find what you're looking for in there? I'm telling you right now, you're not going to find it. I'm telling you. And if you find your wife in the club or your husband in the club, you better make sure they get right with God. Because usually that's not where you find the right person. It happens every now and then. My friend reminds me regularly that he met his wife in the bar and they get along well. It happens every now and then, okay? But most times it's not going to happen. You're looking for something. And sometimes we don't even know what we're looking for. And I've preached about this before. Have you ever had an envie for something? For all you northerners, that's a craving. Like you ever just had an envie and you'll know what it is. And then you eat something, and after you eat it, you're like, nah, that wasn't it. You know what I'm talking about? It's just like, it's just, it's, that's the way it is for God. It's like, you're hungry for something, but you can't explain it. And God's trying to tell some of you, look, if you can make room for me in your life and get rid of some of this distraction and all this stuff that's trying to fill your mind and heart and your weekends and your life, that I can come into your life. But you got to make room for God. you got to clear the stage and let God be the God of your life. Can I get an amen? So environments matter. It, they affect behavior. They do. They matter. Space matters. It matters. I don't know about you, but I don't like sitting close to a bunch of people I don't know. Does that just wig you out? Some people are touchy-touchy. Like, people will come meet me, and they'll come stand right here. And they're like, I'm like, are you about to kiss my nose? Like, what are you doing? Like, I like space. I'm like, I love people. I'll hug you. I'll shake hands. But, like, don't stand right here. Space. It matters. Environment matters. I, I, believe, I believe that some of the problem with the poverty in our country is the environments they grow up in. They don't know any better. They don't see hope. They don't really have a culture where you can raise, be raised up and be educated and have an opportunity. That's why I believe the church has got to get more serious about helping the poor and those in need. We got to go in these communities and we got to find a way to create an environment, a godly environment where people can rise up from the ashes of hopelessness and know that God loves them and there is hope for their lives. Can I get a witness in this house? Y'all with me today? They tell dieters the first thing to do. What do they tell you to do when you start your diet? Go to the pantry and throw out all the what? Junk food. All the bad food. You got to get rid of it. You got to change the environment. You've got to make room to do the right thing. You're not going to, don't think you're going to have like six gallons of bluebell ice cream. Come out, get thee behind me, Satan. You're going to eat it. If it's there, you're going to eat it, right? Don't go to the buffet talking about you're going to eat a salad. No, you're going to eat general chicken and gain weight. Because that's what happens. That's what we do. We think we can control our appetites, but we have to make room. We have to eliminate things. We have to make room for God. And God is calling us to make room for us because we're too busy. Some of you need to get rid of some relationships in your life. You could be sitting by him right now. Maybe I should preach on something different. Some of you, you need to get, you need to stop hanging out with those people you hang out with. They're bad influences on you. You know, every time you try to quit smoking that weed, you go hang out with Larry and Larry always has weed. And he's telling I'm not going to smoke this time. I'm not going to smoke this time. I'm not, I'm going to smoke this time. You're going to have to make room for God. And I know all that just seems impossible. It sounds hard. It's like, how can I quit this? How can I do it? No, 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 no. You just say, God, here I am, an empty vessel. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to start it. I don't know how to quit it. But God, here I am, an empty vessel. You know what's going to happen? The Holy Spirit is going to be poured into your life. And all of a sudden, you're going to have power to do things you never thought you had power to do. In this church are people that used to be alcoholics, drug addicts, prostitutes, but God saved us. His blood washed us. His spirit filled us. And now we're better because of it. Come on, somebody. Take a break right now and praise God. The first thing Peter told 
the new believers who realized they had crucified Jesus, who was their Messiah, and they had put him to death. They felt convicted, and they were like, what do we do? First thing he says, repent. Acts 2.38, repent. That means clean out your heart. Make room for God. Say you're sorry, but mean it. But don't just confess change. Nobody wants you to keep apologizing for the same thing and never changing your behavior. I've seen men beat women and keep apologizing for the same thing. She must not be Cajun, because I'm telling you, these Cajun women around here, that beat you. Like, you get beat. <laughs> I'm talking about my wife is abusing me. But he'll say, I'm sorry, but not change. That work. That work. Somebody steals from you. They say, I'm sorry, but they keep stealing from you. It doesn't work. God is saying, for you to clean out your heart and make room for me, I need you to do an about face and start pointing your life for God and start walking away from sin. And you're not going to feel the strength to do it. And guess what? You're going to trip up and fall sometimes. But if you're walking towards God, the Bible says a righteous man, that means a good man, is going to fall seven times but he riseth up again, which means a good believer. It's not that they never make mistakes. It's that they try their best, and when they make a mistake, they get up and keep trying again. That's the kind of believer God wants you to be, but you got to make room. And so Peter said, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said, when you clean out the heart, now you can get the Holy Spirit. And you know what happens too? We get the Holy Spirit. Some of you have it. How many of you have the Holy Spirit? You know you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, evidence of speaking in tongues. We get it, but then we grieve him by making something else the Lord of our lives after he's been made the Lord of our lives. And we invite distractions, and we keep telling God, I'm going to get around to it. I'm going to get around to it. I'm going to get around to it. I'm going to start praying eventually. I'm going to start reading my Bible eventually. I'm going to get it right eventually. I'm going to do it right. And we keep just putting God to the side. We keep inviting him over for dinner, but there's no place for him to sit. We keep inviting him to come stay the weekend in our house, but there's no room for him to stay in. We keep saying, God, come in our heart, but there's no room in our heart for God to live there. But today, we got to go to God with empty hearts saying, God, I'm sick of my life as it is, and I want a life with the Holy Spirit as my leader. And you can do it. Tap your neighbor and say, you can do it. If you repent, if you clean it out, the distance from a desired behavior to your actual behavior is rarely traveled. How many of you started a diet January 1? Be honest, raise your hand, don't lie, we're in church. How many of you started, you said, I'm going to lose some weight. Y'all have already given up, haven't y'all? Y'all, nobody's raising their hand like, I quit. I gave it up. <laughs> I gave up. We intend to do it, right? How many of you got broken stuff at your house that you've been saying you're going to you're gonna fix for years? Forever. I used to, before I lived in the house I, had na I have now, I used to live in a house in Shriver, and we had some gates. I called them the gates of hell. They would constantly break. And over time, I just left those gates. I just left them all broken. You just, you just I intend to fix it. And when you got to go in the back and stuff, you got to do all kind of special stuff to open it. Like a burglar couldn't get in your house if you tried to let him in because that thing's so broken. That's how it was because over time you just, you don't, you don't fix it. it. You just get used to it. You intend to do it, but you don't make the time for it. We intend it to love on our kids, but we were so busy with work. We intend it to be a good husband, but we got so busy. We intended to be a good wife. We intended to be a good minister. We intended to come to church every week, but we just got so busy, and now we're living in regret. But what if we turn regret into repentance? Clean down our heart and say, God, today is my day of breakthrough. God, empower me to do what I haven't done yet and fix the things I haven't fixed yet. Man, we've got so many broken things in our lives, so many broken ways. My daughter, I, it's like I'll catch myself doing stuff sometimes, and I just feel so bad. I'm like, Josh, what's the matter with you? It's like I have great kids. Jensen and Miley are amazing kids. They really are. They're very loving. They're good kids, 
most of the time, and we love them all of the time. But Miley, we were skiing. We were going the first day of skiing. skiing. We were waiting on the shuttle, and I was nervous, y'all. Like, I'm, I'm, I've added to my ministry, and I'm older now, and I'm like, oh, my God, I don't want to die. You know, I don't know what skiing's about. I'm scared. But the one thing everybody told me over and over and over and over and over again, don't let yourself get wet. If you get wet, you're going to freeze on the mountain. So I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm serious. Like, I don't want to freeze, you know, and that's what everybody said. And all of a sudden, while I'm talking to everybody, while waiting on the shuttle, I feel somebody hit me with a snowman and it goes down my back. It's my daughter. Now, you think as a good pastor and a good Christian, I'd be like, sweetheart, don't do that. That is not what I did, y'all. I was like, what were you thinking? Because in my mind, I'm going to die now. I'm going to freeze to death on the mountain (laughs) and not make it off. And I'm going off on her. I'm like, stand over there. And I'm like, not the world's best dad right now. I'm like yelling at her, and I'm mad. And I was thinking after my wife explained to me how wrong I was. (laughs) I was like, where did that even come from? Because sometimes there's stuff crawl deep down in your heart, and you're like, where did that anger come from? Like, come on, Josh, a piece of ice is going to make you go off? You're not going to die, Kuyon. Where did it come from? It came from deep in the pit of your soul. You didn't make that space. You didn't give that space, that anger, that fear to God. I was living in fear, and the moment I had to face that fear, I lost it. And so many of us are going off on people and doing angry things and doing hateful things and doing it because we're afraid. It's deep in our hearts and we haven't made room for God to be in control yet. So you know what I did? I apologized to my daughter and she still wants to be my daughter. Isn't that awesome? I could just hear it now. My dad was a pastor, but behind closed doors, he yelled at me for snow, throwing snowman at him. Whatever. It's like, God, help us. Let me let you confront me, God, where I don't want to be confronted. Let me make the space. This woman was in a dire need, and she lost her husband. Her husband was a prophet. He was a good man, but God took him. He died, which goes to tell you, just because somebody dies doesn't mean they did something wrong. Don't think because you're sick or diagnosed with something or died or someone you love died is because someone did something wrong. Sometimes that's just the will of God, and he doesn't have to explain that to us. And so they, she lost her husband, and she was in a bad place, and now she didn't know what to do. So the prophet told her what to do, but listen to the words that the prophet is saying. What do you have in your house? And she's saying nothing but a jar of oil. What do you do when you don't have enough to get the job done? Do you give it to God or do you give up? Do you quit or do you trust God? I don't have anything, God, but this little jar of oil. Woman, give me this jar of oil and I'm going to show you what I could do with what you got. You know what God's trying to tell somebody in here? No, you're not good enough. But give me what you got, and I'll fill the gaps for the rest of it. But I need what you have before I can give you what I have. God is saying, give me a heart, and I can give you a miracle. Give me an empty vessel, and I can give you the Holy Spirit. Somebody shout yes. God's saying, here it is. I can give it to you, but I need to have what you have. Can I have what you have? God, it's just a a little Cajun. Like, why? Why you want me to preach? God, I just, I'm not a good speaker. Like, why would you do that? I don't like suits and ties. I don't like all the church stuff. Definitely not wearing a turnaround collar. Why, just give me what you have, and I'll take care of the rest. Some of you are saying, God, give me a miracle. And God's saying, what do you have? And you're like, just this broken heart, just this lonely, broken heart, God. He's like, give it to me. And when she gave him the jar of all, he says something so unique. He says, go find as many empty vessels as you could possibly 
find and use that jar of oil. I'm going to flow from what you have. And in between you pouring out what you do have, I'm going to feel what you don't have. But here's the other thing. I need you to go borrow these vessels from other people. Teaching us that you can't do this thing on your own. You're not going to have God in some closet, in some bedroom, watching it on TV and never experiencing it with other believers. Eventually, you're going to need a miracle where other people are going to have to be involved. That's why we come to church. That's why we do community groups. That's why we take next step because you're going to need other people. You're going to need it. It's crazy. Are you like me? Are you independent? I don't like to need people. I like to have everything on my own. I don't like to need people. Because to me, it's so humbling to have to ask somebody for something. I like to have it all. But in God's kingdom, you got to be willing to go to others when you need them. And so she goes to him. And she gets as many vessels, but this is a specific kind of vessel. Do you know the kind of vessel it was? Empty vessel. Had they brought full vessels, how can the oil be full poured into something that's already full? He said, bring me empty vessels. It didn't have to have any kind of qualities except emptiness. I wonder how many of you are here today and you're empty. And you're thinking God doesn't want to pour in your life because you're emptiness. But that is the very qualification for God to pour into your life is that you have to be empty. And as long as they brought empty vessels, I wonder what they had to dump out of those vessels to make them empty. See, God wants some empty vessels in house of prayer today for him to pour into. But I wonder what you're going to have to pour out of your vessels to make them empty. I wonder what fear what anxiety, what big mistake you made this week. What big mistake you made 20 years ago that you haven't let go of yet. What somebody did to you when you were little. And now God's saying, come to me, but you're going to have to pour that stuff out. But I'm promising you, if you could have the courage today to just simply say, God, I'm pouring out my heart to you. I'm pouring out my life to you. I'm empty, God. I've got to let go of this hate. I've got to let go of this anger. I've got to pour out myself. I can't change them, God, but I can't carry this anymore either. He said, that's all I wanted in the first place was for you to pour out your vessel unto me and come empty and I'll fill you. And he brought the empty vessels and then it says something so unique. When there was no more empty vessels, The oil stopped. Stopped. Do you know most of the churches in Thibodeau and in the state of Louisiana and in our nation no longer preach the baptism of the Holy Spirit evidence of speaking in tongues? Most of them do not. Because it weirds people out. It's unexplainable. It's hard to explain. So we just ignore it and throw it out. And what happens is now the oil has stopped. Because the oil is a typology of the Holy Spirit. So what's happening is, is people are saying, we already got it. But when you're full of something and it's not oil, he will no longer pour the oil. And so now we're, we're saying we don't believe in the oil, so the oil is stopped because people aren't coming to church hungry and desperate and ready to receive of God. They're not coming empty. They're coming full of busyness, full of life, full of sin, full of doubt, full of fear, full of anxiety, and the oil has stopped. But as for house of prayer, as for my family, as for this ministry, we're going to be the kind of church that says we believe in coming to God empty and hungry and desperate. And we believe he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. This this promise is for all of you and your children and your children's children. As many as the Lord our God shall call, this Holy Spirit is for all of you. Come on, give God some praise in here. It's for every one of you. Would you stand to your feet? It's hard to explain to somebody the Holy Spirit if they've never experienced it. It's one of those things that you're going to have to trust God and believe before you completely understand it. Because 
it's kind of like when they were trying to teach me how to ski, Jay, my buddy, one of, he was one of the guys. It was Shay, Seth, and Jay, and all of their wives, and a lot of them were good skiers. And they were trying to explain to me. And they were saying things like, Josh, you just got to trust it. Pop your hips. Lean back. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how. And I just, they were trying to explain to me. They were like, just trust me. And I tried to do it. And I'm trying to pop my hips because they were like all professional looking and stuff. And I'm just like, so I had to try to believe them even though it seemed like I couldn't do it I had to keep trusting what they were telling me was the truth and right even though I wasn't experiencing it like I was trying to experience it but by the third or fourth day Josh started hitting some blues y'all if you don't know what the blues are go google it some blues. first blue I felt like after a while, blues got easy for me, and the greens got boring because I was learning how to flow like they taught me how to flow. See, before I was fighting them, but after a while, I started learning how to ride them. See, some of you don't know how to flow in the Holy Spirit, and with Sister B and all Bishop and all the godly people, Sister Annie and all the people who know how to flow in the Spirit, they keep telling you, come on, it's good, and you're like, come on and they're all like it's awesome and that's what they were telling me and I'm like no it's not I got snow on my face and stuff true story by the time I yielded and learned what they were saying was the truth I said this is the most fun I've ever had on a vacation ever and I'm not gaining weight because we're skiing on the best vacation ever. The best life. I'm telling you, you've got to trust me. I've been on both sides. Trust me. Living for God is the best life there is. Being full of the Holy Spirit is the best life there is. You're like, I don't know how to do all that stuff. Just keep trying. Keep yielding. I promise you, it's worth it. I promise you. Hey everyone, thanks for checking us out today. If you enjoyed what you watched, Subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can watch us as much as you want. And if you'd like to go live with us every Sunday, you can go to our website at hopchurches.com. That's hopchurches.com. We hope you enjoyed it. Share it with a friend and we look forward to seeing you.